Microservice architecture has been the talk of the town for quite some time now. It's an approach to building applications as a set of small services. Microservice architecture is mainly focused on backend, although the approach is being used for frontend as well, commonly known as micro frontends. Each service runs in its own process and communicates with other processes using protocols such as HTTP, HTTPS, WebSockets, or AMQP. Each microservice implements a specific domain or business capability, is developed autonomously, and also deployable independently. Welcome to Omega Codex, and my name is Sanal. Docker is almost synonymous with microservice architecture, and Visual Studio makes it very easy to work with Docker. Today, we'll go through how to set up a local development environment with Visual Studio and Docker to build a multi-container microservice application. Throughout the series, we will build a microservice application using this setup. So let's jump right in. Welcome back. As I said earlier, a microservice architecture is an approach to building applications as small set of services. But then how much small? Well, size isn't important here. What's more important is to create loosely coupled services that give you the autonomy in development, deployment and scaling for each service. Of course, when designing a microservice, we should try to make it as small as possible, as long as we don't have too many direct dependencies with other microservices. But still, more important is the internal cohesion it must have and its independence from other services. But then, why do we need microservice architecture? Microservices make maintaining complex, large and highly scalable systems easier as we have independently deployable services with autonomous life cycles. Also, microservices can be scaled out independently unlike monolithic applications which are scaled as a single unit. This way, we can scale just the functional areas that need more processing power or bandwidth which means lesser hardware resulting in cost savings. It also enables better continuous integration and continuous delivery. It accelerates the delivery of new functionalities into the application as you can run and test microservices in isolation and evolve them autonomously as long as we don't change the interfaces or contracts. When developing such applications along with Docker, we follow a set of steps. At this point, we are still not considering the whole DevOps workflow which we can include up to the production deployment, but just focusing on the local development environment. The basic steps we usually take are code your app, then write a Docker file, create images defined in the Docker file, define services by writing Docker Compose YAML, run containers, test the app or microservice, and finally push the code or further continue developing your application. To start with the first step, we need to set up our local development environment. The difference while developing for Docker is that we are deploying and testing our app within Docker containers in a local environment. If you want to know about .NET on Docker container and the options available on it, I have a video where I talk about choosing the right .NET container based on your application requirement. The link to that video should be up here on the right corner. To begin with, we need to install Docker Desktop for Windows. Docker Desktop is a one-click installable app that sets up Docker on your machine and enables you to build and share containerized apps. It's a pretty straightforward GUI that lets you manage your containers, applications and image directly on your machine. It helps reduce the time spent on complex setups so that we can focus on building our app. You can follow the link shown here or you can use the link in the description to download Docker Desktop. Once the Docker Desktop is installed, it will ask you to sign in. So if you already have an account, you can use that or you can create a new one. If you don't have Docker Desktop installed, you can pause the video here and get it installed using the link. I'll meet you in the next section. I hope you're done with the Docker Desktop installation. Once you have installed Docker Desktop and logged in to it, you would see a similar interface where you have options of images, containers, and in images section, it would show what all images are available in your Docker host. 
and if any containers are running it would show up here so like i have a container which is running and you can also manage those images and containers from this desktop you could also use docker cli to uh, run the commands and manage those instances but docker desktop gives you an easy uh, user interface to manage for developing our application i'll be you i'll be using visual studio 2022 community edition version 17 along with asp.net and web development workload installed as shown here you can start coding in a plain .NET even without enabling Docker. However, it is recommended to enable Docker because it will be our actual environment and any issues that can occur can be discovered as early as possible. Also, Visual Studio makes it very easy to work with Docker. Next, we need to create our Docker file. Docker file is a text file that contains a series of instructions for building a Docker image. It's like a batch script where the first line states the base image to begin with and then follows instructions to install required programs, copy files and so on until you get the working environment you need. With Visual Studio, this task requires only a few clicks. When we create a new project in Visual Studio, there is an option named Enable Docker. So if we create a new web app or a web API project, we'll have an option called Enable Docker. Selecting this would create a Docker file automatically. So let's go and add and create it. You can also enable Docker support on an existing ASP.NET Core project by right clicking on the project and selecting add Docker support, which would essentially create the same Docker file which was created when we created this project. So let's look at this file. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, this file is like a batch script with a series of instructions. So if you look from the beginning, the first statement is pulling out an ASP.NET 7 image from the official uh, Docker registry. So this would work as the base for a Docker image. And then you have a set of commands like worker directory would be app. Uh, it is exposing port 80 and 443. Now we are going ahead with the build process. So the rest of the commands are for building the application. So now it is pulling out the .NET SDK image. So if you compare it with a traditional build process where you would usually build the application using the .NET SDK and eventually you would run it using .NET Runtime. So here it is pulling out the SDK image, uh, defining a working directory for now as source and then copying files to another folder, doing a .NET restore to do a new web restore, then changing the working directory to web application 2 and then running a .NET build which would release the build to the app build folder. And each of these stages, this, this is called a multi-stage Docker file where each of these stages are also defined by a name. So now the next stage is from build. So it is picking up from here, from build as publish. And then it is doing a .NET publish to app publish folder. Now it is going back to the runtime which we had taken out in the beginning of the file as the final stage and again working directory is app and we are copying from the publish folder that is sorry we are copying from the published stage this particular folder to dot that is the working directory so whatever was published it is being copied to this particular folder and we are defining the entry point for this application which is our web application 2.dl so when you run the docker image in a container this would be the entry point for your application and that's from where the application will be started now the next point i want to bring up is that since you have watched till this point i hope you're liking the video so go ahead and click the subscribe button hit the bell icon if you haven't done it yet also don't forget to hit the like button it keeps me motivated to create more such videos Coming back to the actual next point, the next step is to create images. With Visual Studio, building Docker image is done automatically. So when we build this application and run using this Docker option here, it would automatically run the commands for you and create an image. But let's try to understand what's happening behind the scenes. Let's try Docker images and it would list the images which are currently available in my docker host so this web application 2 is the image which was created by visual studio we could also do the same thing from a docker command so let's see if docker build we'll define a tag so let's call it codex application 2 
and I'll define a tag as dev. And the file I want to use is the application to and Docker file. Sorry, I missed a dot in the end. So if you see here, it is running the same instructions which were there in the Docker file from getting the SDK and then building the application. So it is running .NET Restore right now to restore the project and then it will go ahead and build it and then publish it will create the image and it's done so now if we go and check what all images are there in our docker host we'll see we have one more one new image which was created 10 seconds ago and it's it has the same name which we have given to it with a tag of dev now when you are building a multi-container docker application we would want to deploy all the required services for our application the docker compose yaml file lets you define the set of related services that can are to be deployed together as part of your application you can right click the project in visual studio and add container support which would create the docker compose yaml for you we'll look into this file later but for now let's move ahead the next step is to build and run the application through docker with visual studio it is as simple as running with Control f5 to run or f5 just to debug so we'll just run it by clicking the docker option here let's give it a few seconds to build and run then now the build is continuing and you can see it had run a docker run command sorry it had switched docker run command to run our application if you come to this containers tab here it shows the container details and what were the environment variables that were set on this container. So when, when we were running a .NET for uh, web application, so we know that you know, there is a set of environment variables which we can set as part of our configuration settings. So be it our ASP.NET for environment or be it connection strings or any other settings which we need in our application. And those all come up here when we set up our application accordingly. So now our application is started and we can see it has launched the swagger ui now if we come to docker desktop we can see that our web application is running now if you notice here it ran the web application which visual studio created by itself it did not run the one which we had created by running a CLI. so if we come to containers tab we can see that our application is running and it is running on q2770 these are the port numbers which were defined in docker file 80 and 443 and then there is a mapping to that port number and these port numbers are the one which are getting exposed outside the docker host so inside the docker it is running on ports 80 and 443 and for it to be accessible from outside these are the port numbers which are mapped against these so we had our app running on docker and we can test our application using this local docker host so now we have emulated the same environment which would eventually be there on production and we can use this setting to test our application and once we are satisfied with the changes we can go ahead and commit the changes as we would normally do in a development scenario now developing a containerized microservice application would mean that we are building a multi-container app you could also have a multi-tier application split into multi-container app but then you may not be following a multi uh, microservice architect now is docker necessary for microservice architecture absolutely not docker is just an enabler and can provide significant benefits and on top of that if you know how to work with microservice based microservice application based on docker you should be able to work with any application model on docker now that we have a basic understanding of how these things are going to work it's going to help us in building running and testing our services much more efficiently we'll wrap it up for now in this video in the next video we'll build the first microservice for our hypothetical application on asp.net web api and sql server as backend meanwhile if you want to know about dotnet containers you can check out this video if you want to know about gRPC services, which can be beneficial in this microservice series, you can check it out here. That's all for now. See you in the next one. Till then, adios.